Lockwood's Asylum is a survival horror deck building game where two to five players try to survive the night in an asylum that has been overrun with terrifying monsters and unspeakable horrors. During a game, players will purchase three types of cards, allies, monsters, and horrors. Allies are the beneficial cards that go into a player's hiding place, called their room, while monsters are harmful cards that the players send after their opponents. Horrors are the boss encounters of the game and typically have far-reaching effects that terrorize the players and make life difficult for everyone. Worse yet, when horrors and monsters are defeated, they become a permanent part of a player's deck, ensuring that they will return to harass the player in the future. To win, a player simply has to be the last one standing, at which point they escape the asylum while the monsters feast on the corpses of their opponents. Let's talk about each type of card in Lockwood's Asylum. Ally cards represent the various doctors, nurses, patients, and visitors the player can recruit into their rooms. These are the beneficial cards that will stand as a bulwark between the players and the monsters that seek to end their life. Monster cards represent the various creatures and violently insane people wandering the halls of the asylum. These are the harmful cards that can be sent into the rooms of the other players to lower their health. Horror cards function much like monster cards, except that they are much stronger and harder to destroy. Most horror cards have a global effect that harms or hampers players regardless of the horror's location. Each card in Lockwood's Asylum has the following parts. First is the card's name, which is accompanied by a small subtitle that provides a bit of further information on the card's backstory. These are the card's cost and produce values. In order to purchase a card, a player must discard a number of cards from their hand. The total produce value of the discarded cards must equal or exceed the cost of the card the player wants to purchase. Next is the card's type. In addition to the colored strip, which denotes the card's type, allies are green, monsters are red, and horrors are black. The card's type is also listed here. The card's damage value shows how much damage the card deals in combat while its health value shows how much damage the card can absorb before it is slain. Finally, the text section of the card contains its unique actions and game effects. A game of Lockwood's Asylum is set up in the following manner. In the center of the table is the Asylum deck, which contains allies, monsters, and a few horrors, which are seated into the deck at fixed intervals. When the game begins, the top eight cards of the Asylum deck are flipped over and placed face up into the Asylum spaces next to the deck. It is from these spaces that the players will purchase the allies, monsters, and horrors that will make up their decks and the decks of their opponents. Next, each of the players sets their health to 20 and creates a deck of 10 cards. These decks are composed of 5 copies of the Stoic Orderly and 5 copies of the Frightened Patients. Each player shuffles their deck and places it to the left of their room. At the start of the game, each player shuffles their deck and draws five cards, save for the first player, who only draws four cards on their first turn. The first player then takes their turn. At the start of their turn, the player refills any empty spaces in the Asylum with a card flip from the Asylum deck. Since this is the first turn of the game, there are no empty spaces to refill. Next is the threat phase. If the player had any monster cards in their hand, they would be placed, one at a time, into their room until there are either four monsters in the room or there are no more monster cards in the player's hand. Then, the player places any horror cards in their hand into their room. If a player places any cards into their room in this way, they draw one card for every card they placed. Since there are no monsters in the player's hand, no monsters enter their room. Next is the action phase. The Frightened Patient doesn't have any actions listed in its game text, but the player could use the Stoic Orderly to place another ally from their hand into their room. For now, the player chooses not to play any actions. After the action phase comes the purchase phase. In this phase, the player can discard the cards in their hand to purchase cards from the Asylum. Purchased allies go directly into the player's room, while purchased monsters go into the room of the player on their left. Since there are no monsters to defend against at the moment, the player decides to play aggressively and discards their entire hand, with a combined purchase total of four, to purchase the Enraged Skin Taker card. Since it's a monster, the Enraged Skin Taker is placed in the room of the player to their left. 
A player's room is just the open space in front of them between their deck and their discard pile. When the enraged skin taker enters the left player's room, it triggers its game text, which reads, When this card enters your room, you may remove an ally in your hand from the game. If you do not, lose one health. After a moment of debate, the left player decides to just lose one health, which drops their health from 20 to 19. Once the purchase phase is finished, if there are any monsters or horrors in the player's room, they trigger a battle phase. However, since there aren't any in the player's room at the moment, this phase is skipped. Finally, during the end phase, the player discards any cards in their room, discards their hand, and draws five cards. If they run out of cards in their deck, they shuffle the discard pile into their deck and continue drawing cards. Let's jump ahead a few turns to show how combat works. Here we are at the start of the player's turn. Their opponent has purchased an enraged skin taker to harass the player in their room. At the start of the turn, the player refills the empty spaces of the Asylum with the top cards of the Asylum deck. Next is the threat phase. The player has one monster in their hand, the Faceless Despoiler, so it's placed into their room and they draw one card to replace it. The player drew another monster card. Fortunately, they have already passed the step that requires them to place monster cards into their room, so the player is allowed to keep the possessed patient and its high produce value in their hand. After the threat phase is the action phase. The player decides that they need to get some allies into their room, so they play the Stoic Orderly for its action. The Stoic Orderly allows the player to place a frightened patient into their room and then draw a card. Then, because the Stoic Orderly was played for its action, that card is discarded. With no other actions in their hand, the player moves to the purchase phase. Since there's a monster in their room, the player's frightened patients have their produce value increased by plus one. The player decides to discard two frightened patients to purchase a weary receptionist from the asylum. Since the weary receptionist is an ally, she goes directly into the player's room. The weary receptionist has a very potent game effect. While she's in the player's room, she increases the produce value of the cards in that player's hand by plus one. The player then discards a frightened patient to purchase a helpful nurse. With their last card, the player discards the possessed patient and uses its boosted produce of four to purchase the grasping tentacles card. Since the tentacles are a monster, they are placed in the room of the player to the left. With the end of the purchase phase, the battle phase begins. Here is the player's room. During a battle, the player first adds up the damage values of the allies in their room. This gives the player a total of four damage that they can assign to any of the monsters in their room. The player assigns three damage to the faceless despoiler and one damage to the enraged skin taker. Since the damage assigned to the faceless despoiler equals its health, the faceless despoiler is slain. The damage assigned to the enraged skin taker isn't equal to its health, however so the enraged skin taker survives the attack. Normally, cards are just discarded when they are slain, but the faceless despoiler has a special slain effect that kicks in when it is slain. The player must reveal the top card of their deck, and if it's a monster card, it goes directly into their room. The player immediately reveals the top card of their deck. Fortunately, the revealed card is an ally, so it's just discarded. Next, the monsters get their chance to strike back. Just like with the allies, the player totals the damage of the monsters in their room for a total of three damage. The player chooses to place two damage on the weary receptionist and one damage on the frightened patient. Since the damage of those cards equals their health, both cards are slain and discarded. If all of the player's allies have been slain, any excess damage lowers the player's own health. Finally, once the battle is over, the player resolves any survive effects on their cards that are still in their room. In this case, the helpful nurse lets the player reveal the top card of their deck. Since it's a monster, it gets discarded. The helpful nurse has aided the player in evading a threat. Now that the battle is over, the player discards all of the cards in their hand and room, and the turn passes to the player on the left. Gameplay continues, one turn after another, until only one player remains. Will you be the one to survive a night? in Lockwood's Asylum. <laughs>